This video is sponsored by 1Password. The last time I took a look at the S21 Ultra, I kind of bagged on, well, pretty much the whole experience. But is the S21 FE any different? Hi, my name is Pete, and today we are continuing our never-ending journey to try and switch away from the iPhone to an Android phone. And today it is the Samsung S21 Fan Edition, which is essentially is a one year older, slightly cheaper version using older and cheaper parts. And it's a really interesting phone because, well, it's now 2022 and we're probably a matter of weeks away from the S22, but also because it's actually really good. Before we continue, if you do like hearing an Apple fanboy struggle with using an Android phone, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel with the button down below there somewhere. Otherwise, let's um, figure out how this works. So yes, the last time I looked at the S21 Ultra, it was the second Android phone that I'd ever looked at before. And it's quite clear that I was pretty clueless to how Android worked. And I slagged it off because no quick and easy access to the torch, which I use like daily when I'm hunting around the house at like 1 a.m. after playing some Call of Duty, trying not to wake the wife or kids. When actually, well, it can do that. Hello darkness, my old friend. But I'm older, wiser. And recently I fully switched to using my Google Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy Watch 4 for the last three months. Today is a fresh start. And like always, I'm gonna cover off what I love and some of the things that I don't love about this phone. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll let me know down in the comments below so I can re-educate myself again. Now, what I love about this phone, firstly, the fingerprint reader. It only takes a few seconds when I switched away from the Pixel 6 Pro to this for me to realize how bad the fingerprint reader is on the Pixel, which in itself is crazy since they're both using the same technology. But with that said, it is still not as fast as the S21 Ultra, which used this ultrasonic sensor, whereas this is using an optical sensor. But compared to the Pixel, I've actually enjoyed it more this time around than actually the Pixel 6, which seems bizarre to me. Also, I find the positioning of the fingerprint reader on the S21 so much better with loads of other phones that I've tested. You either have to look at the screen to line up your finger properly or just learn the muscle memory over time to get to know where to put your finger. But with the sensor being down the bottom of the phone, it makes it really, really easy just to pick up and know instantly exactly where to place your finger. Also, the general size and shape of this model feels a lot nicer, in my opinion, than the Pixel. And also the old S21, mainly because it's a little bit shorter, so you don't have to like stretch to reach the corners. It's also much lighter, like mostly due to the plastic back on the phone, but it's noticeably lighter than the Pixel 6 Pro, even though they have the same battery size in them. The buttons are also much easier to work with on this model than the Pixel because they're just a bit more clicky. The screen also, beautiful. Something I've come to love with Samsung phones in general are their screens are probably one of the best in the business. And it's also flat, which I actually really, really like now compared to the Pixel. And at 700 nits with adaptive brightness, it's bright enough to see on sunny days as well. For the lock screen, I love that it's more customizable, always on lock screen, which is much bigger and can display a lot more color than the Pixel. So it's easier to just glance down and know which apps have notifications. It's also good to see the notification features once again, where it can animate the outside border of the screen with a color based on which app is notifying, so it uses the app's color. That's a really neat feature I really, really love to see again. And for customization, the stock launcher is pretty solid, actually. It's definitely taken me some time to get used to it, and it does have a few quirks, but overall, it does work quite well. Though I do also really like using customer launchers and probably would advise you to do that still if you're digging into a little bit further, like under the hood. If we look at cameras, and actually, these are now a good comparison hardware-wise between either the Pixel Pro or the uh, the iPhone 13 because we no longer have this dual telephoto lens with this 100 times zoom. Now you also get an ultra-wide, a wide, and a single telephoto lens. I do like that they're also recessed more than either the iPhone or the Pixel, so there's only very little wobble when typing on a desk. And I actually think it's probably the cleanest looking of all the three phones I've got now. And in my camera comparison test between the S21 Ultra, the iPhone 13 Pro, and the Pixel 6 Pro, I always thought the S21 just seemed a little bit washed out, but I'm happy to see that this isn't the case on the S21 Fan Edition. And I'd probably say the Pixel still holds the winner of the best camera, but I actually prefer the interface of the S21, which kind of brings me on to the next thing that I love about the S21 and Android 12, bugs. I haven't had half the number of issues with the S21 FE than I did on the Pixel. I have recently had the December and January updates, which improve things a lot for the Pixel, but the S21 just, it just feels snappier. For example, if I compare double tapping the power button to launch the camera when comparing, it is ever so slightly faster. But honestly, when actually using this day to day, 
it feels like a complete night and day difference. Now in terms of bugs, and I'm now using the Galaxy Watch along with the Galaxy phone now, Google Apps work properly, finally, which I know sounds stupid, but trying to use a Google phone and a Samsung watch, well, basically none of the Google apps would work for me. So I'm glad to get the full features of this watch back again. Honestly, it's such a good watch. It's automatic workout detection is better than Apple, in my opinion, picking up on like walks or tennis much better and faster than the Apple watch does. The customization on the app selection, also really, really great. And have you ever tried, my God, have you ever tried to repair an Apple watch? It takes an absolute decade, whereas the Galaxy watch took me all of about five minutes to set it up and start using it. Now this time I went for the smaller Galaxy Watch 4 rather than the classic with the bezel. And I really like the experience of not wearing this bulky watch on my wrist like my 45 mil Apple Watch is. It is more comfortable to wear while sleeping if you wanna like track your sleep. And there's less resistance when swimming. And I always defaulted to getting just the biggest one with the biggest screen, but I don't actually think that's the best thing to do anymore. Not after trying this for the last few months. Also, quick shout out to 1Password for sponsoring this video. I legit have used 1Password for far too long to remember. And because using 1Password makes it so much easier for me when setting up each new phone when I test them without having to like remember a ton of passwords. So go check out the links down below where you can get up to 50% off a subscription. Now enough about the good stuff Pete, tell me what makes this phone a pile of junk? Why is Android so bad? Android phones are crap. Nobody should buy one of these. So let's just roll through what I call the minor annoyance list and see where we end up. Firstly, and this is frustrating because something I use on the iPhone constantly is to swipe down and it instantly goes to search for the apps. So you type what you want there and there it is. On the Pixel, it has this, but it's a swipe up instead. Also great, it does a great job. On the S21 FE, you can only have the instant search after you swipe up. If you also have the home screen layout set to home screen only, which then means you have pages and pages of the other apps, when I'd rather use the home and app screen, which hides away anything you don't wanna see and only shows you all the apps like when you swipe up. But this way around means you have to now tap on the search bar each time. It's kind of a really minor, but also really, really annoying feature. I'm not sure why you do this, or at least have the option to enable a quick search when swiping up with these settings enabled. Now next is the battery and charging speeds. The S21 FE has 15 watts wireless charging versus 21 watts on the Pixel and only 25 watts when wired, which is still better than good old iPhone, but with all of my playing with Android phones this year, particularly around the OnePlus 9 Pro, every phone I use now just feels just slower to charge. I think I've kind of been spoiled with the OnePlus 9 there. Battery life, also not as good as the Pixel in my use case. And I'm already having to charge the Pixel midday sometimes to get through. And the S21 FE definitely just needs more charging than others. And again, this will depend on your use case, but for most people, it's probably fine. I just spend way too much time on my phone. A random one here, but I guess again, spoiled by other phones now. One thing I'd really gotten used to on the Pixel, and I found it so much better than the iPhone, was to double tap on the back to take a screenshot. I found it really, Really, really convenient. I didn't miss trigger too often. And someone who plays the drums and like taps away with the fingers all the time. So it's kind of annoying not to have this feature on what is another flagship phone. Now the face unlock for me, still not that great. I don't think anyone will be able to have anything just as good as Face ID as Apple, but I'm guessing they've kind of painted in that so nobody else can use it. But Samsung tells you themselves when you go to set that, that the face unlock isn't secure and could be unlocked by someone who looks similar to you or, or using an image. So yeah, that's a no-go for me. But the fingerprint reader was surprisingly easy to get used to on this phone. I think if you're first time switching away from Apple to Android, going from Face ID to fingerprint print does just feel like you're going backwards. I'll be honest, I felt the same. It's taken me a very long time to get used to this. It's just one of those things you will have to suck up if you want the other benefits that Android can give you. For me, and most recently, I only really found this an issue a few times when painting a room where I wanted to see what a notification was, which with the iPhone, you just kind of lean over the desk and it will unlock for you. Whereas with the Android, you have to put your phone down and or put, put the paintbrush down rather, and then pick up the phone. First world problem, I know, but it also means if you get water on your fingers or paint, or if you're outside in the cold for a while, then it just won't always work as reliably as well as either an ultrasonic sensor or face ID. And then we get to possibly the biggest issue of them all with this Samsung S21 Fan Edition. And that is the price. 
because whilst this is a great phone, the price just doesn't fit right. Back in early 2021, when the S21 was launched with specs that basically set the precedent for all the other phones that came out for the whole of 2021. But we're now probably only a matter of weeks, possibly a month away from seeing S22 launch. And the S21 FE is being launched at 699, which is interesting since you can actually pick up an S21 for 699 on Amazon or even less if you want a refurbished one. And because that 699 price tag puts this in between both the cheaper Pixel, which I'd say is a better camera, but perhaps more buggy Android experience and Samsung's own S21 itself. So I'm not sure why anyone would be going out to buy this phone for 699 when right around the corner we're going to get the s22 unless of course they're going to be phasing out the original s21 when the s22 drops pricing the s22 much higher and then that in itself will just open up some other questions so other than the strange price question there are two other things that remain from my original frustration with the s21 ultra but they're perhaps like now marginally better than before the first up is screenshots you can now either use the two keys on the side which they're on the same side of the phone so if your thumb is big enough you can use that typically it needs two hands to do that or you can swipe your palm across the top something which kind of just feels a bit gimmicky to me now the other is the spacebar which on the iphone if you hold it down you can kind of basically turn your finger into this it's basically a mouse cursor where you can just effortlessly move the cursor around like on an actual computer now it is better on the s21 than the Pixel, which only moves one character at a time. But it has this feature where if you push up too far or down, it then jumps to the beginning or the ending of the conversation. And I can see why is it helps jump there as if you, you know, if, you, if that's where you wanted to go. But I found it way too sensitive and perhaps could just wait a second more before it moved. I just found it so frustrating when you want to just quickly correct something and just go a smidge too far. Oh, and yes, I've also tried different keyboards too and same issue. And then it wouldn't be an um, apples to Android comparison without mentioning universal copy and paste. Now it's kind of annoying that it's not there natively built into the Mac like the iPhone. Yes, I get that. And it did frustrate me a little at times, but honestly, it's not a huge change. And there are apps like Snapdrop that can actually get you back AirDrop to any device, not just Apple devices. So there are workarounds, just none that work quite as well as the Apple universal copy and paste. But that's what you get from the whole Apple ecosystem with the whole like integration thing. So a year later after testing, the original S21 Ultra, do I think Android is good? Yes. Do I think the iPhone is better? No. Do I think the S21 FE is better than the Pixel 6 Pro? Actually, right now, I do think that I prefer to use this as my daily driver instead of the Pixel. It's smaller, it fits in my hand better, feels snappier, has less bugs, the watch works better and the fingerprint works better, but I'm not actually going to switch to the S21 FE yet. Although I actually really want to, but what I want to do now is after using this Pixel 6 for three months and then this one for a couple of weeks, I actually want to try going back to the iPhone because I want to see if I miss anything from Android when going back to an iPhone now after spending more well, the best part of four months not using one. Subscribe if you want to see that video, which will be coming soon. Check the links down below for 50% off of one password. But for now, take a look at the Pixel 6 Pro three months later or one of my other videos and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.